So, yeah, how does consciousness express through all these different objects? I mean, everything. It's the mystery of mysteries. It really is. But what we can say, and that's, this is getting a bit philosophical, and I don't mind. What we can say is that on a fundamental level, and this is not understandable with our thinking, we can only get a grasp, get a feeling for it perhaps, when our thinking stops. What actually happens is that there's one, one reality, only one reality, and it expresses through form. This is the, uh, this is what uh, I think my, most religions have said, and certainly most mystical systems have said, and this is what Tantra tells us, and yoga tells us, and Advaita tells us also. There is one reality, and what we see through the senses is an, is, <laughs> is an expression of that reality, actually. Um, yeah, it's like it's like the it's like the screen here. Look, I'm looking at the screen here, and I'm seeing all these beautiful faces here. You know, it's like um, the screen of the existence. It's like a screen, and on the screen of existence, there are all the animate and inanimate objects, beings, the universe you know, completely beyond our understanding. These are all expressions of an underlying uh, one reality. Some people would call it uh, God. Some people would call it consciousness. In the scientific community, they are now in quantum physics. They're now talking about very much about consciousness because they can see what was completely unpredictable before quantum physics that in fact, not by mystics, mind you, but in science, that actually there is the, the, the observer, and the observer means the consciousness, conscious observer impacts, affects what is being observed. From these philosophical systems based on deep understanding and to reach that understanding Without being silly, we have to let go of our conceptual assumptions. Yeah, we are limited. I mean, uh, as human beings, we are limited in the sense that we see, we see the, the objects outside, we hear sounds. We are limited as human beings by this framework. But we have this capacity of moving back in our identification with the fact that we are conscious. And as we move back, we're not rejecting life. Life is as it is and life goes on and actually move in to identifying more with this consciousness. So it's kind of opening up. It's opening up our understanding so that we can, even a glimmer, if we want to understand fundamentally, then we have to let go of the assumption that we can understand everything through thinking. We can't, actually. I mean, thinking is extraordinary. We know this. But we're talking about fundamental things here, or the fundamental basis and when we move back to identifying with awareness or consciousness call it what you wish then it's like opening up opening up the doors of perception as William Blake said the doors of perception then we can appreciate we can't know it the mind is too limited we can't know it we can identify with it we can yeah we can identify with that when the doors of perceptions are cleansed it means when we open up to what we are 
on a deeper level, then we start to appreciate the, the possibility, let's put it on a level of possibility, or the fact, depends what you want, that this whole universe, extraordinary though it may be, despite that we get completely hypnotized by distances and millions of light years and all the rest of it, which are completely incomprehensible, we can, when we pull back, we can appreciate, I think probably appreciate is the only word, or we can realize the fact that everything, whatever it is, all things are expressions of this one reality. And awareness, our awareness is actually a portal into it, if you like it. It's, and this has been, you know, the proposition of, of mystics uh, worldwide. And if you look, using different terminology, even different concepts, they're all pointing at the same understanding worldwide. It doesn't belong to any particular group. It's a worldwide phenomenon. Um, yeah, of course, yoga, tantra, dvaita, these are ways of helping us to come to that realization. And it's, it's not belief, you know, uh, the, these systems are not specifically concerned with belief, actually. You don't need to believe. Although it, many people here may not think it, but actually I'm very much a bhakti. <laughs> I practice bhakti yoga. You might not believe it, but I can tell you it's, it's absolutely true in my own way, you know. Because um, belief also, if, if it's powerful and it's an open-ended belief system, then it can take us uh, deeper. And I think it can take us deeper into the realization that we are talking about uh, this very moment. So belief has its place, but it doesn't depend on belief. It is something when the mind stops, we can realize it in our own being. We are the expressions of that reality. And as human beings, we've been given this gift of being able to realize it also. Yeah, most of us play around in the world and that's great fun. We, have, we live our lives and uh, with all its ups and downs and that, uh, that is extraordinary in itself. But uh, for some reason or other, and I certainly don't know the reason, uh, some people seem to be drawn. Uh, it's like this consciousness is pulling them back to realizing itself through you. So that's mysticism, yoga, yoga, tantra, advaita, these are all uh, mystical systems, ways of accessing the mystery. And it's the same with uh, the mystical systems uh, worldwide, of course. We can't, mentally, we can't comprehend it, actually. It's impossible. And I think it's important for there to be humility, <laughs> humility uh, in our own capacity to understand or to explain or whatever. But the process of mysticism is where we internalize to the very source of what we are. And the more we appreciate the source of what we are, the more we can access this mystery as to how consciousness expresses into everything in the universe. You know, we are playing around with things. If, if, if we try to understand these things, so, and this is not a cop-out, <laughs> not meant to be a cop-out by the way, but you know, if we try to fit this in to a little pigeonhole, uh, we'll just get a headache. You know, this is why so many mystics, they didn't talk, they just kept quiet because whatever they said was not it. <laughs> it might have been an expression of it, but what they say is not it.
realization comes through being available, open, and quiet, actually. The quiet mind gives us access. And that's not even true, because as I've said many times, you can be washing the dishes and you're physically active. You may be running a, running or something. You may be doing anything. And somehow a little portal comes through and, and you realize something. It can be, you know, realizations on a day-to-day -day basis, but it may also, you certainly may realize something uh, profound. Of course, you know, it's in the, if you want the, uh, the, uh, the traditional concepts, you'll find them there in Tantra, of course, Shiva and Shakti. Shiva, consciousness, Shakti, energy and everything else. And then you think, well, that's duality. But of course, Tantra, Advaita, and Yoga, they go beyond that. They say, actually, that duality is there to explain things. Shakti is the whole, it's the, the mother, it's the universe, it's energy, it's matter, it's everything, you know. And underlying that is Shiva. And it's nothing male or female in this. We don't need to get into sexism, it's just a symbol. Shiva is the consciousness. But beyond that, there is something which brings these two things together so that there isn't this uh, um, duality. So it's, 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 it's given there in the, in the Tantric texts in particular. Because um, the tant Tantra always addressed this issue. Tantra was never scared to address the fact that we have our daily life, we have our ups and downs, we have our desires and so forth. Tantra was always very concerned about, you know, what is the relationship? It's all very well shutting our eyes and cutting off and sitting in a cave. That's a good thing too. I wouldn't mind doing it sometime, but uh, we can't deny the world. Temporarily, yeah, it's got its place to shut off. We do that when we practice yoga every morning, we hopefully turn off all the internet and WhatsApps and all the rest of it. We are creating that uh, space. So it's addressed, in, so it's addressed there in, uh, in Tantra in particular. And of course yoga and Tantra are like this anyway. So it's there in yoga also. Because we can't deny our experience. We can't deny our sensory impressions. We can't deny what we're seeing through the eyes. We may question their validity. I mean, this is another philosophical conundrum. Do, do we see what is there? If I'm looking at an apple, there's an image of an apple in my mind, but is the is there actually, is the apple I see in my mind, the apple that's outside? That's another conundrum. But, uh, this, this life is, and the existence is far beyond the word extraordinary, I mean, or miraculous. When I use these words, it's, it's insipid. It doesn't say actually just how extraordinary uh, this life, this existence, is so my words don't do it justice that's for sure but <laughs> if uh, if this exchange has stirred up a few questions then that's good if uh, if it's stirred up even some resistance and you think no oh, i don't believe in that stuff no 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 then that's good we have to be stirred up. If we don't get stirred up, this is my experience, absolutely. If you don't get stirred up, we rest in our laurels. We rest in our suppositions. We rest in our complacency. We rest in our conceptual framework. And what is to be realized is not encompassed by any conceptual framework. 
It doesn't mean we don't live our lives. Yeah, we live our lives. Of course we do. But by doing yoga, we are actually opening up uh, the potential that is innate in all of us to a realization of uh, fundamental, the, the fundamental principle actually. Identifying with this moment. Knowing that we are all brothers and sisters in this adventure of life. And like all brothers and sisters, sometimes we fight with each other. We are all sharing this, this journey, this experience of life and existence. 